children lost, ensnared by a witch's binding spell. Jessaline, the awakened soul, yearns to escape and find a new home. Dare you join her and explore more? from you because I have discovered that there are so many celebrities that hide hidden messages and meanings in their songs and their music videos. Like so many artists that you most likely listen to or that are extremely famous that everybody knows. And there's just so much that I can't do it all in one video. So I wanna cover each artist individually in different videos. I just think that'd be so cool. And today we are talking about Ariana Grande because to be honest, for this series, I just looked up the 50 most popular artist of 2019 and she was at the top. She was the very like number one artist all you guys like. Now personally, because I'm real on this channel, I personally don't really listen to her music. I wouldn't say I'm like a huge fan or anything. Do I think she's a very talented singer? Yeah, her voice is amazing. Do I know all of her songs by heart? No. I do listen to maybe a handful that I think are super catchy and super good, but the main reason I have chosen her to do for this video first is because she is number one of 2019 apparently and because so many of you guys have requested a video like this with her stuff in it and because so many of you guys like her so that's why she's the first one <laughs> but I would like to cover a lot of my favorite singers like Ed Sheeran like just a bunch of people Lady Gaga I love Lady Gaga so there's so many other artists that I can do for this series and I'm just I'm just excited so oh my camera battery's dying okay <laughs> Gotta change that. One eternity later. Oh, oh my gosh. That took so long and now the sun's going down. I look orange. Look at me. That's such a change. That took like an hour. <laughs> okay. Let's finish this video. Finish it. We haven't even started it yet. What am I talking about? Okay, so let's get into the hidden things in the Ariana Grande music videos. Some of you might have already seen these things, which is kind of cool, and maybe you haven't. Just keep in mind that all of these things that I'm going to talk about are fan theories and things that fans found in her videos. So none of these things, or at least most of these things, have not been confirmed by Ariana Grande herself. Just want to put a little bit of a caption message here at the beginning because I don't want her to be mad at me because that will not be good. <laughs> These are just fan theories, guys. So let's start off with her Thank You Next music video. So while pretending to play Regina George in Mean Girls, laying on her bed with the burn book, Ariana can be seen flipping through pages of her exes. And the difference in this like burn book is that she's not really burning them, she's more like thanking them. Like as you can tell by the title, Thank You Next, her burn book is like a, a thank you book. But a lot of people have missed where it says, sorry, I did when she gets to the Pete Davidson page. The two broke it off in October after a whirlwind engagement. So the fact that it says, sorry, I dipped makes people kind of think like, hey, she must have been the one who broke it off. Because if you were the one broken up with, why would you say, sorry, I dipped? But I feel like you guys are like, you guys know this stuff already. <laughs> it's so weird. When I'm talking about like breakups and celebrities, I always feel like this is like a drama channel all of a sudden or like, I'm a news person like, so Ariana Grande and Pete Davidson had a whirlwind engagement. <laughs> I feel like I need like a teleprompter here or something. Is that what it's called? A teleprompter? Okay, the next symbol in the Thank You Next music video is the Seven Rings license plate. Ariana can be seen driving a sleek black convertible with the license plate that spells out Seven Rings, which was a hint to her next single. So when this Thank You Next music video was out, nobody really knew what the Seven Rings meant on her license plate until obviously the actual Seven Rings music video came out. And then people were like, oh, that makes sense. I saw that, that makes sense. 
sense. It's a connection. And apparently she's known for hinting at her next singles in parts of her music videos, which is kind of cool. The next symbol in the Thank You Next music video is the shirt that Ariana Grande is wearing. It says, during the iconic Mean Girls scene when the plastics are walking down the hall, Ariana Grande is wearing a shirt that says a little bit needy. It's a playoff of Regina's actual shirt from the movie that says a little bit dramatic, so she changed it to a little bit needy. But the word switch is in reference to the song Needy off of her upcoming album. So once again, she's hinting at a song from an upcoming album, which is kind of cool. But other people are also wondering, hey, maybe her shirt is referring to like one of her exes that they're a little bit needy. But either way, she does have a song called Needy on her album. I feel like an Ariana Grande expert right now, <laughs> even though like I'm even though I'm not. The next symbolism in this music video is that Frankie Grande makes an appearance because a lot of people were saying, hey, she has so many people in this music video that are her friends in real life, that are her family in real life. Like she likes to put people from her real life into her music videos. So a lot of people were saying like, why was Frankie Grande not really in it? Was he in it at all actually? I don't even know if he was in it at all. This is what it says. Ariana and her bro are super close, so you may be thinking, why wasn't he in the video? Well, joke's on you because he is. So technically, there is a symbol of her brother in the video, which is kind of cool. It says, when Ari is dancing on her bed, you may have noticed a signed poster of an ice skater. Well, it's not just an ice skater, it is Frankie behind her, which is really cool. She's always sneaking little things into her videos that you guys may not have noticed just by watching it one time. And that's not the only time this Frankie poster comes into play. His poster is also hanging up in the 13 going on 30 dollhouse. It's that same skater picture on the wall. So she definitely found a way to include him. So if you're wondering like where was her, where was her brother? Well he's there. He's in the background there. By the way, can I just say that it was so cool that Ariana Grande chose Mean Girls to be incorporated into this video because that movie, like I grew up with that movie, like I feel like every person you talk to knows like 27 lines from that movie. <laughs> so I just found it really cool how she did that, but she also incorporated like other movies from my childhood, so. Good on you, you you clever. Okay, let's move on to the Seven Rings music video. So this might not come as a surprise to you, but there are hidden sevens all over the place in this music video. So it does show me a few of them. The first one is the mailbox outside of the house. There is a giant seven on the mailbox. And one thing that probably a lot of people did not know, in this music video, for a split second, three diamond Japanese characters for the number seven flash on the screen literally for a split second so they just show up so you have to like pause it at the perfect time I don't know how anybody even like saw this because I didn't <laughs> but that's kind of cool and sevens also appear on the champagne bottles throughout the video so it's not like super in your face but like there's so many sevens hidden throughout the music video so those are the three that people are talking about mainly if you guys know of any other sevens comment it down below so let me know <laughs> the next thing in that video is the license plate. So it seems like she likes to put little hidden meanings on the license plates. So keep that in mind for her next music videos because it just, that's where she always puts her hints in her license plates. So a car in Seven Rings has a license plate that reads 25 19 85. And fans think that it's a shout out to the fact that she's 25, but dropped her first album when she was 19, even though it feels like it's been 85 years since then. So you have 25 19 85. And the 85 might seem random to some people, but she actually made a tweet. I can see if I can find it and put it on the screen. But she made a tweet a little while ago talking about how it feels like it's been 85 years since she dropped her first album. So that could be what it means. I don't know. Like I said, these are just fan theories. <laughs> and there's actually another bit of symbolism on the car. It says, fan thinks that the side of the car says NASA, and that is a little hint from Ari about which single will be next. So I don't think that ended up being a single. I think that was just in her album, right? I don't know, guys. I don't know all the songs in her album. I'm sorry. I'm not a huge fan. I'm just... I just like her music sometimes, you know? <laughs> and I feel like that shouldn't be something. I always get nervous like doing videos 
on artists because I feel like if I'm not the biggest fan of the artist, people get mad. And I feel like that's such a silly way to think because not everyone's gonna be fans of the same person. We all have different tastes in music. It doesn't mean we don't like the person. It just means that maybe our taste in music is different. Like for me, I prefer to listen to like alternative, acoustic, really slow, calming music. Other people might like pop, they might like metal, they might like different things. So I'm doing this series and just because I choose an artist to do a video on doesn't mean I'm like super fan. You know what I mean? Okay, let's move on to the breathe in music video. So we're gonna talk about the first symbol, which is the clouds. And this might be kind of an obvious symbol to a lot of people. It says throughout the video, the clouds are featured to obscure Ariana's vision and hinder her everyday life. At one point, the entire upper half of her face is covered by clouds, visually representing her anxiety. By the end of the video though, she's conquered her anxieties and she is seen performing on a swing high above the clouds. So it shows her whole like face and body being clouded at the end she's like free of it. So like, I don't know, it could be a really cool symbolism of anxiety. I don't know if she confirmed this theory or not, but like, I can see how that works. I can see that. <laughs> this next one was one that everyone was kind of freaking out about when it was first shown. It's the thank you next track listing on the wall. So it says, perhaps the most obvious hidden message during the train station segment of the music video, a timetable board is shown with a number of seemingly unrelated words. However, one of them reads Needy, an already confirmed song for her upcoming album, Thank You Next. I guess this article was written before then, so now the album is out, as many of you probably already know. So fans obviously came to the conclusion that the board features a teaser for the release's track listing with song titles including Imagine and Remember. So she just likes to like throw her song titles out there in her music videos. So just keep, keep this all in mind for next time she drops a music video because she likes symbolism obviously. Okay, this next symbol was very controversial and it is the hidden voice. It says Breathe In opens with a muffled voice saying something unintelligible. So it's just like this muffled voice that no one really knows what it's saying. Even if you turn it up really loud, you're like, wait, what? It sounds like gibberish. And this proved to be very mysterious to fans when Sweetener first debuted. However, in September, somebody got the idea to play that part backwards and realized it was actually a quote from the singer's late grandfather telling her, tonight's your special night, do something magical. I don't know if this was ever confirmed by her. I read a couple different things that said that it wasn't her grandfather's actual voice, but it was like a quote from him. But like, you guys let me know, cause I, I'm not up with, I'm not in the loop with all this stuff. <laughs> the next symbol is the mountain of baggage. This might also be kind of like an obvious symbol when you're watching the video. It says, during one scene, Ariana is set on top of a pile of suitcases. Some fans think this could be a reference to the mountain of baggage that she's had to deal with the last year. So as you guys know, the past couple years, she's gone through quite a lot. So that's where this music video comes in and the symbolism of the baggage. Like she's sitting on top of all of the craziness that has happened to her. And then we're gonna move on to to the No Tears Left to Cry music video. And this in this video, she also releases her track list because once again, this is like a repetitive thing I keep saying, but her songs are everywhere. They're always hinted throughout the music videos. It says, near the conclusion of No Tears Left to Cry, Ari removes one of her many faces and is seated on the floor surrounded by a number of masks and papers. Although you can't entirely make out what is written on the notes, fans have made some anal... Wow, I can't say that word. Fans have made some analysis. Analysis? Analysis? Fans have... Fans have analyzed this, okay? <laughs> Among the most popular theories is the idea that the performer secretly shared the track list for her next album. It's just interesting to see like what people take out of her music videos and that's what I want this series to be about. I just wanna go through these singers' most popular songs and find things that people have like pointed out. So let me know if you guys are interested in this series and please let me know what artists you want me to cover, but I hope you enjoyed this and if you are an Ariana Grande fan, that is really cool. If you're not, that's cool as well. Not Everybody has to like agree on every single thing. You know what I mean? This series is just for fun, whether you enjoy the music or you don't. It's just cool to kind of like look at all this stuff. 
And last time when I did the one on Ariana Grande, all the comments were saying, please, Jesse, do Billie Eilish, please. And honestly, I am a huge fan of Billie Eilish. I've been listening to her music for the past like two years or so, and it just keeps getting better and better and better. I really hope I'm saying her name right. It's Billie Eilish, right? Because I used to say Billie Eilish, and people were like, no, Jesse, that's wrong. You guys should know by now that the way I pronounce things is not always correct. <laughs> And I feel like it's also not always my fault just because like my mouth, I just blah, blah, blah. Anyways though, today we're going to be doing the video on Billie Eilish and just remember the things I'm about to talk about are fan theories. They're not theories I came up with myself. I'm just repeating theories that other people have said online. And also most of these theories were not confirmed by Billie Eilish herself. So take it for what it is, make your own opinion about it, but I just had to make a quick disclaimer because I never want celebrities coming after me, you know what I mean? So yeah, these are fan theories. Theories, all right, so just everyone relax. So the main theme of today's video is going to be the Illuminati, which honestly I'm kind of surprised about because until I researched, you know, the hidden meanings in Billie Eilish music videos, I never really had an Illuminati vibe until I read the fan theories. And now unfortunately this whole video is gonna be about the Illuminati and Billie Eilish. People seem to be convinced that she has joined the Illuminati, but I mean, which celebrity hasn't at this point, you know what I mean? I feel like you hear everybody saying so-and-so has joined the Illuminati, Beyonce, Lady Gaga, Taylor Swift, just everybody's there, apparently. So I don't even know what to believe anymore, you know, what's made up, what's legit. But a lot of people are saying that up until like this past year, no one's really heard of her. She hasn't been that popular. She hasn't been playing on the radio. No one really knew who she was until this past year and all of a sudden, any platform they go on, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, her videos are popping up everywhere. Now, I can't relate to this because I personally have known about her for two or three years, so it's not like a new thing for me, but I do know like my sister, my friends, my parents had no idea who she was until recently. But that doesn't really mean Illuminati, like people are saying, that could just mean she had a few great hits and finally people are taking notice to her. So you can make that into like a logical thing, but Fan theories online are saying, nope, she's in the Illuminati. I know one thing is for sure, it's that her music is darn good awesome. Darn good awesome. Wow. But yes, I will agree her music is very dark. She does have some dark vibes, but I think that's sort of why I was drawn to her to begin with. She's just like very different. And you guys know that when I say different, different means like a positive thing. Another reason why fans are saying she joined the Illuminati is because in the past year or two, her eye color has changed, which they might be stretching a bit there. <laughs> There are a lot of like side-by-side -side pictures showing that like, oh, two years ago when she had this interview, her eyes were bright blue. And now look at this 2019 interview and her eyes look so dark blue and almost black. I mean, that could contribute to like lighting issues, maybe contacts, it could be anything really. But people are saying that celebrities' eyes get darker significantly when they are taken by the Illuminati. It represents like something evil and it means they're being controlled. So I don't know how much you guys believe that, but it's, it's a fan theory. It's not my theory. I'm reporting what the fans are saying. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people when they watch me do videos like this, they're like, Jesse, how dare you say that? Like, how dare you? Just a reminder, this is not coming from me. I'm just reporting it for the video, okay? I love Billy. So the first music video we're gonna talk about is the Lovely music video, and this song is so amazing. In the video Lovely, Billy and Khaled are walking around like lifeless zombies inside a a glass box wearing chains. So when people saw this, they thought, okay, it's two young artists in the industry that are completely under control. And at the end of the video, Billy hides one of Khaled's eyes while he opens one of hers. Apparently the one eye sign means you're being an industry slave, AKA a part of the Illuminati. I mean, think about how many celebrities have pictures of them covering one eye. People have said for years and years, this is the classic classic sign that you're being controlled or you're a part of this Illuminati group. So many people I can think of right now that have done photos covering one of their eyes or like doing the, is it this thing or something? <laughs> Honestly, I have not delved that deep into like Illuminati stuff, so I'm not a pro. What's weird though is that I did have a class in college that like covered the Illuminati for like four months and it was the scariest class I've ever taken. And like, I feel like I didn't retain as much as I should have from that class because like, <laughs> 
that might have been covering my ears a bit. Anyways, let's go to the When the Party's Over music video. In the video, Billy sits in front of a glass of black liquid, still wearing her trademark chains. After downing the entire glass, Billy immediately begins gagging and black liquid starts gushing out of her eyes. I remember that when I saw this music video for the first time, it was kind of hard to watch. It's such a beautiful, haunting song. And I saw that and I was like, whoa, are those effects or is that real? Like, and then I watched like a behind the scenes video and like, that's all real. They put like these like straws like near her eyes or these little, um, not straws, like tubes. And there was actually like black liquid coming out of it, which was so cool. But people are saying that this black liquid she ingested represents the toxic industry that she's entering. So she's very self-aware of what's been going on with her, the fact that she's been being controlled as, as fans say. So she tries to express it as much as she can in her music videos. So this black liquid is just like the sick controlling minds of the industry. And it just like totally takes over your body and everything you do. Let's move on to the You Should See Me in a Crown music video. Billy wears an ironic crown, the kind of crowns given to slaves to ridicule them. And real, actual spiders are crawling all over her. She had some bravery to film with real spiders, let me tell you that. Even at one point, this big, hairy tarantula spider crawls out of her mouth. That is not CGI. She has admitted that was a real spider. And you're probably wondering, Jesse, what does that have to do with the Alum Illuminati. <laughs> Illuminati. I can't speak. So what does that have to do with the Illuminati? Well, fans have said that there is a man named Fritz Springmeier who wrote a book called The Illuminati Formula to Create a Mind Control Slave. So he wrote an entire book basically about how the Illuminati works. And in that book, which was written a long time before Billy did any of her videos, it describes a lot of the awful things that she's done in her videos, like with spiders, chains, black coming out of the eyes, ingesting poison, burying a friend. Apparently all of these horrible acts are how you join the Illuminati. Isn't that crazy? That was the one thing I read from fan theories that I was like, whoa. That's pretty weird. But I mean, even still, anything to do with the Illuminati and celebrities, I'm pretty skeptical. You have to like really convince me for me to like totally believe the theories, you know what I mean? I mean, the entire time I was researching for this video, I thought it was a little bit a little bit over the top. <laughs> okay, the next one we're gonna cover is the Bury a Friend music video. So this is the cover art of the album, which was released when the video Bury a Friend came out. People are saying that the white eyes represent a lack of soul or possession. And apparently over the years, many young artists have been represented with blank eyes for some reason. They're saying that the Illuminati loves to portray their slaves that way. Okay. So in an interview, Billy stated that Bury a Friend was supposed to be about sleep paralysis. And most people who actually experience sleep paralysis feel like there's an evil presence around them. People often refer to sleep paralysis as the demon in the bedroom. So in Bury a Friend, Billy is portraying that demon. That's why you see the guy lying on the bed and she's like under the bed and like crawling everywhere. She's supposed to be that person. So that's what she confessed in an interview of what the video was about, but of course people online had other ideas, which is what I'm gonna tell you. Illuminati symbolism of unseen people or forces taking control of her in terrible ways, like grabbing her, ripping her clothes, putting needles in her back. That part where they're grabbing her hair and her eyes are changing color, people are saying that represents the mind control. And she repeatedly says, I wanna end me, because deep down she doesn't wanna be a part of that controlled life anymore. And I mean, think about how many celebrities in their songs, like if you really listen to their lyrics carefully, they talk about how they don't want to be controlled. They don't want to be a part of this crazy industry. It's a really dark and sad thing. It doesn't even have to mean it's Illuminati. It could just mean that this life they're living, it's a lot of pressure on people. It says the second verse of the song explains that she's been dealing with an entity that can help her become a star, but there is a cost. So 
So we're gonna read those lyrics right now. It says, keep you in the dark, what had you expected? Me to make you my art and make you a star and get you connected. I'll meet you in the park, I'll be calm and collected. But we know right from the start that you'd fall apart cause I'm too expensive. I'm like listening to the music in my head while I'm saying that. But it's talking about like making her a star and everything else. And then apparently the bridge of the song sums up the true meaning of the entire song and music video. This is where fans are really saying this is the proof that she joined the Illuminati. So we'll see. For the debt I owe, gotta sell my soul cause I can't say no. No, I can't say no. Then my limbs all froze and my eyes won't close and I can't say no, I can't say no. So that's symbolizing she sold her soul and now she has no control. So it seems like Billie Eilish has this theme in all of her songs and her music videos about selling her soul to the industry and being controlled. And what's really creepy is that in all the Illuminati books like ever written and all the websites you go on about this stuff, it says that killing a friend is the ticket into the Illuminati. You have to bury someone that you're close to, which is really dark and creepy. So those are basically all of the fan theories that I could find. Once again, I did not come up with these. I'm just sharing them with you. Um, personally, after reading all of these, do I think she's joined the Illuminati? No, I don't think so. I think I will need a lot more proof than this. Do I think that maybe she finds the industry overwhelming and controlling? Yes, I think many celebrities do. But as I always say, let me know what you guys think. If there are any other songs that have some significant meaning that you wanna talk about from her. And please let me know the next person you want me to cover in this series. Today we're going to be covering Melanie Martinez, which is so requested by you guys. I used to listen to her music back in 2015. I even did some reaction videos to her music. I just think it's so quirky, so different, so dark in kind of a good and bad way maybe, and just really catchy. I love everything about her music. Now I was hesitant on making this video just because, you know, there have been some past events where she was in the news, I think a year or two ago, don't even remember when that was. So we're gonna try and like push that all aside and we're just gonna focus on her music. Now there is so much symbolism in her music videos. It's insane. Basically we're gonna be covering all the songs in her album that she made into music videos. So this might be a long video but it's gonna be worth it. Okay so let's talk about Melanie Martinez. In case some of you have never heard of her or never heard of her music, here is a quick summary. Melanie Martinez is like a pop star plucked from the American imagination of Dr. Seuss. The singer wears oversized hair bows and bright colored lipstick and she sometimes paints graphic teardrops on her cheeks. But there's a complexity and dark side behind her baby doll aesthetic. So yeah, like I said, it's some dark stuff a lot of the time. But that is why a lot of people love her. So let's start by talking about the music video Cry Baby. Now, a lot of you guys may wonder why the heck she calls herself Cry Baby, and I had no idea sort of the history behind it until I researched this. Apparently, when she was growing up, people around her labeled her as a cry baby. And as you guys know, that is a person who cries or gets upset at the simplest of things. So the song Cry Baby is about people, including herself, who are extremely sensitive and tend to be triggered or who get upset easily. So she created this character throughout all of her music videos in the album called Cry Baby, and that's a fictional version of herself. So as you see in the music video, her brother writes her name on her birth certificate calling her Cry Baby, which is kind of weird how he had the authority to like write her name on the birth certificate. And if you guys look closely at this hospital scene, the cat clock that appears in the hospital is the same clock that appears in Pity Party, which is another music video that she did. So it seems like she likes to take the same props and put them into different music videos for you guys to kind of find out and point out. Now something Melanie Martinez admitted is that in that music video she completely forgot to paint her nails. So in that video she has this red chipped nail polish all over her nails. It looks horrible and she admits to it because she totally forgot to get them done before the video. 
video. Now what's interesting is that along with the album, Melanie actually made an illustration book. So for each song, she has an illustration. So for the Cry Baby page, it says, saddest girl she has to be, salty tears stream down her cheek. Her heart's bigger than her body. Her name is Cry Baby. I find it so cool that she actually has a picture for each song. So let's move on to the video Dollhouse. Dollhouse is about a family that appears to be perfect on the outside looking in, yet it's far from it. In the video, Crybaby's mother is an alcoholic due to her husband's infidelity. Her brother has gone down a really bad path, and Crybaby is the only one to actually see all the tragedy happening around her. Her family is visualized as the dolls living inside of a playhouse that belongs to a little girl. Now, this song also has another meaning that Melanie actually admitted to. She says it's basically about how people view celebrities. In an interview, she said, this is a quote from her, people put them in glass boxes and think they're perfect. And when something happens that shows when they're humans, people don't like that. And that's so true. Whenever a celebrity gets into a type of scandal, people immediately get mad and attack them as if we as humans don't just make mistakes every single day as well. So here are just some interesting sort of facts about the video. The bear next to the doll's head is Melanie's actual phone case. And what I find so cute is that the bunny in the kitchen scene is actually Melanie's pet bunny in real life and there was no reason whatsoever he needed to be in that scene but he kind of just hopped on camera while they were filming and they just left him there. <laughs> and the skirt next to Crybaby when she is strapped into the box is the same skirt she wears in the music video for Carousel. So like I talked about any sort of props and clothing she likes to take from music video to music video. So the next music video we're going to talk about is Sippy Cup. So this music video reveals the events directly after the dollhouse music video. So all of her songs are like in sequence, obviously. This song is about what actually goes down in the kitchen, which is a lyric in Dollhouse. It provides a deeper look into Crybaby's family life. So obviously, if you've seen the video, it's pretty dark. It's about her mother getting rid of her father, you know what I mean? And there's a lyric in the video that goes, kids are still depressed when you dress them up. And that describes how no matter what we do on the outside, our inner feelings remain the same. Now, there was this huge debate among fans on whether or not Crybaby died at the end of this video, but during one of her concerts, she actually answered this question publicly, and she said no, she did not die. Her mother just gave her something in the video to put her to sleep, so it just looks like she did, but she didn't. Her mother did that so she would sort of forget what she witnessed. So here is the illustration that goes with this music video. It says she watches mama sip a drink out of a sippy cup that pink. Because of that, you'd never think that she'd pass out under the sink. I just think these are so cool, and I can't show every single illustration in this video for every video because some of them are inappropriate for me to show on my channel for like monetization reasons and just other reasons. But if you want to see her entire illustrated storybook, it's available online for you guys. So let's talk about the music video Carousel. First of all, I just want to say that this video, this song actually is amazing. This was the first song that actually got me into listening to her music. It's just like, it's a jam. <laughs> this song is about Cryberry, <laughs> Cryberry. <laughs> I can speak. This song is about Crybaby's first love interest and her first sort of love encounter at this carousel. She wanted it to be magical in order to capture the first feelings of love and yet still expresses the dark side of how toxic a one-sided relationship was. She talks about how she can never quite catch up to him because he's not reciprocating her love. So it's kind of like a one-sided relationship where she really, really likes him and he kind of just likes her a little bit. She feels like she is glued on top to a carousel going around in circles, never seeming to be able to reach out and grab the one she loves. So she's basically chasing him, which definitely is a situation that is never wanted by anybody. Now what's so cool is that this song was featured in the American Horror Story trailer for Freak Show, and this just happens to be one of her favorite shows ever, so when she found out about this, she was so excited, just like I would be. Now Melanie states that this song is about a relationship she was actually in, where she loved somebody who didn't really love her back. And what's interesting is that the pink puke we see come out of her mouth is actually just strawberry yogurt in real life And she had to like refilm that just twice and it was absolutely disgusting <laughs> So let's look at the illustration for this music video It says the carnival is where she fell for the first time on the carousel round and round through the same hell She never gets under his shell. So let's move on to the video alphabet boy. This song is also really really good 
I like this song. So according to Melanie, this alphabet boy she's talking about in this video is a boy she met in college that she used to date. He was studying music and he used to try to teach her how to write her own music and he kept telling her that she wasn't writing songs correctly. So he was constantly making fun of her, thinking he was, you know, this know-it-all person. And this made her so upset so she decided to make a song about it. So this video is right after the carousel video. So because, you know, she loves this guy and he doesn't love her back, in this song, Alphabet Boy, she decides to break things off. And what's interesting is although Alphabet Boy is continuously mentioned in this music video, he's never actually shown. There is this one scene where just his hands and his arms are shown on camera, but his actual face and body is never shown for some reason. And we're not going to show this illustration just because, you know. It's got some swear words in it though. Okay, let's move on to the music video, Soap. This song has such an interesting sound. I love all the bubbles and stuff. Like, it's just, it's really cool. So, Melanie says that the song Soap is about being vulnerable and being able to express deeper feelings such as love. So, it feels like washing your mouth out with soap. This was a technique used in older days where adults would wash their children's mouth out with soap after they said something obscene. So, it's basically about how she wants to tell this guy, hey, I love you. You, but she's so nervous too and she's worried that if she tells him he'll reject her and it's the same feeling as if you're washing your mouth out with soap like you wish you never said I love you because it changed everything so here is the illustration for this music video it says she met a new boy and filled with hope she said too much and always choked so she washed her mouth out with soap so that he wouldn't pull the rope so let's move on to the video training wheels there are so many songs oh my gosh there's so much to cover training wheels is a love song that shows Crybaby in a relationship with her crush to a point where she wants to move on to the next stage. So training wheels is a metaphor for her wanting to become serious. So she doesn't just want to date this guy, she actually wants to be in a relationship, call him her boyfriend. So she just has a fear for his sense of commitment. Now an interesting fact is that Melanie wrote this song in only 20 minutes. I don't know how anybody could ever do that and it's such a good song so that's pretty impressive. So the illustration for this video is they rode their bikes so very slow she wanted more as they got close unscrewed his training wheels to grow into a two-wheel bicycle so it's just about moving forward growing as a couple okay the next music video is pity party so this song revolves around crybaby inviting her friends and a boy she likes to her party but unfortunately as the song goes nobody shows up which I can't even imagine what that would be in real life that would suck so she begins to wonder why she put so much effort into everything she did for the party because no one showed up anyway. There's a lyric that says she put a heart on every cursive letter, which shows she regrets doing something so childish when she was inviting her friends. And as many of you guys may have already known, the line that goes, it's my party and I'll cry if I want to, is a sample from Leslie Gore's 1963 hit song, It's My Party. You can also see that there's nine candles on Crybaby's cake, which is the first time we know how old her character actually is, so she's nine years old and there's something in this song that kind of has been freaking people out. There is a unknown faint pitched vocal clip in the background of the song at the end of the bridge and people don't know what this sound is saying, why it's there. It's kind of really random. The placement is just unexplained and people are wondering if maybe it's like some sort of symbolism to something. I don't really know. And the balloon animal that Crybaby made in the music video was based on Melanie's blue balloon animal dog tattoo too, which is kind of cool. So here is an illustration for that song. It says, her birthday was around the bend. She invited him and all her friends, none of which did attend. Her happiness came to an end. So the next song we're talking about is Tag, You're It. And if I'm gonna be serious, this is probably my least favorite song on her album. It's still really, really good. It just always gave me a really weird vibe when I listened to it. I don't know if that makes sense, but if anyone knows where I'm coming from, let me know. Whenever I listened to it, I just felt like weird. Tag Your It is about Crybaby getting kidnapped and utilizing the childish game Tag as a metaphor. In the video, she is vulnerable and alone and she gets kidnapped by a wolf. As the song begins, it's evident that the wolf has been watching her for a while and sees her as the perfect victim. So obviously the phrase Tag Your It is a metaphor for him chasing her around. Now Melanie explained that since she was single at this point in the album because she broke up with the guy who couldn't commit to her, 
wolves are now on the prowl because she no longer has a boyfriend. That's how she sort of explained it. And what's really interesting is that at the very beginning of this music video, Melanie is shown throwing away all of the party decorations that she had in the Pity Party music video. So that's indicating that her birthday party from Pity Party just ended. So like I said, these music videos are like one after another. So here is the illustration for this song. It says, a lonely girl is so vulnerable. To her house she walks alone. The bad wolf ice cream man had known and took her to his awful home. So the next song is Milk and Cookies and Tag Your It and this song were actually combined into one for the music video. So this is what happens after Crybaby was kidnapped. She decides to poison her kidnapper with milk and cookies. And there are multiple references in this music video from kids nursery rhymes and lullabies. For example, the part where Melanie is counting, that is from the nursery rhyme, one, two, buckle my shoe. When she says, hush little baby, drink your spoiled milk, that is obviously from the traditional lullaby, hush little baby, don't you cry. When she says, ashes, ashes, time to go down, she's obviously talking about ring around the rosy. And the line where she says, next time you're alone, think twice before you grab the phone, is in reference to the movie Scream, which I find so interesting. So here is the illustration for this video. It says, she got locked up and made a plan to kill the bad wolf ice cream man. He ordered her to make him snacks. Her cookies and milk made him collapse. Wow, that is like so dark, but like good for you for escaping, I guess. Okay guys, we have three more. So the next one is for the music video, Pacify Her. So Crybaby no longer cares whether she's with a guy, but she decides to get rid of the girl he was with just for fun. So this video is about her trying to free a boy from the grips of his girlfriend. She uses a play on words for the title of this song, Pacify Her, obviously taking from the word pacifier, which is a rubber object used to silence a crying infant. People are saying that maybe in this music video, Crybaby is unfortunately taking after her father because she witnessed her father having many affairs with other women aside from the mother. So he's kind of like a player constantly wanting to break up relationships and this is what she's doing in this music video. Now you're probably wondering why the heck is the boy blue in this music video? Well, she's actually referencing a real life nursery rhyme called Little Boy Blue. And her taking the heads off the dolls in this video is sort of like a reference to the dollhouse music video. But people are unsure of why she had the ability to take her own head off. That's never really explained as to why she can do that. But the illustration for this video is she escaped and was never the same. She swayed a boy who had been claimed and pacified old what's her name, not out of love, just played a game. So she literally did all that for fun. So the next song is Mr. Potato Head. I really, really love this song. So Melanie said that while she was living in LA making this album, she noticed how influential the branch of plastic surgery was in Hollywood. There was like one on every single street corner. So many people she knew was getting plastic surgery. I mean, it's like a really big thing now. And she just thought that people were making themselves into real life versions of Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head, which is kind of a harsh way to think about it, but that's just her perception on people changing themselves. Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head is an American toy consisting of a plastic model of a potato which can be decorated with a variety of plastic parts that can attach to the main body. Melanie wrote this song because she wants to write a song that helps people get over their insecurities and that you don't have to succumb to the beauty industry. So the illustration for this music video is one day she turned on the TV, Mrs. Potato Potato head on the screen showing off her surgeries she thought that her pain meant beauty so we have one last song to cover and that is Mad Hatter Melody said that Mad Hatter is about being okay with being who you are in this song crybaby is fully accepting her insanity and doesn't care what other people think of her now as you guys probably already know this song has a huge inspiration from the 1865 fantasy novel Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. There's a line where she says, so what if I'm crazy, the best people are, and this is a direct line from the book. She slightly changed it, but the real line from the book says, you're mad, bonkers, completely off your head, but let me tell you a secret, all the best people are. And like, I love that quote, it just, 
Makes so much sense. Makes me feel less weird about being weird. <laughs> Melody was saying that the stuffed animals seen in the music video represent the few genuine friends in her life and how they constantly support her. And obviously the bottle labeled drink at the beginning of the music video is a reference to the drink me potion from Alice in Wonderland. So the illustration for this song is Crybaby sat and disagreed. Imperfect, insane, and emotional was she, but she felt safe going to sleep and there's no one else that she'd rather be. So those are all of the music videos we're gonna cover. There were a ton because she did a music video for every single song on the album, <laughs> which is really cool, but obviously makes this video super, super long. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I really find her to be interesting in the way that she makes songs, makes her music videos. And she does have a new album coming out in the fall. I think it's like September or something. So if you guys want me to cover that album when it comes up, definitely give this video a thumbs up and let me know. And comment down below which artist you want me to cover next. Songs often tell tales of love, heartbreak, and adventure, yet beneath the surface, some have become entwined with eerie tales and mysterious urban legends. So the first song I want to talk about is called Love Roller Coaster. Now Love Roller Coaster was a song made by a band called Ohio Players in 1975, and it quickly became a funk classic. Now there's an urban legend surrounding this song because if you listen very, very carefully, you will hear a distant scream during this song. Now, According to the legend, the scream was a result of a woman being unalived somewhere in the studio while the song was being recorded, and some have said it was the cleaning lady. There's another version of the story where a woman crashed through the glass of the recording studio, and due to limited recording time, the performers were forced to finish their session while the injured woman was being tended to. And this myth grew for decades after the song's release, and finally after many, many years, the drummer named Jimmy Williams finally revealed that one of their bandmates purposely let out the legendary scream and they decided not to say anything for years because it was selling the album. This mysterious legend was making people want to listen to the song so it was kind of like bad publicity was good publicity. Now of course I can't play these songs for you on my channel because it would get copywritten but if you just like do a quick search and look for this song it's there and it's pretty scary. Next we have My Way by Frank Sinatra. People in the Philippines believe the song My Way by Frank Sinatra is cursed. According to the urban legend, every time someone sings the song, something bad typically happens. This myth gained even more traction in the early 2000s when someone would sing My Way in a karaoke bar and violence would erupt. Now there were about a dozen killings from 2002 to 2012, and at least one in 2018. So for some reason, when you're in a karaoke bar and this song is sung or played, violence breaks out and people die, which is crazy. Like this is documented. Now violence was so prevalent around the song that bar owners began to ban patrons from singing it. Then we had the song Strawberry Fields Forever by the Beatles. There was a rumor going around for a while that Paul was actually dead. And according to the legend, Paul McCartney died in a car crash in 1966 and was replaced by a double. And it's said that the remaining band members left clues in their albums basically saying that he had died. One clue was rumored to be in the song Strawberry Fields Forever. When the song's outro was played backwards, John Lennon is allegedly saying, I buried Paul. Now the Beatles have always denied this rumor, with Lennon explaining that he just uttered cranberry sauce. But I kind of feel like Ty and I should reverse this song on the vlog channel to see if that's what he's actually saying. Because if he's saying I buried Paul, that is terrifying. All right, then we have the classic In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins. I'm sure most people have heard this song and there's a very creepy rumor that it's about Phil Collins witnessing a drowning. So there's a line in the song that goes, I was there and I saw what you did. Saw it with my own two eyes. You can wipe off that grin. I know where you've been. It's all been a pack of lies. While there are variations on the legend, the story goes that Collins saw someone watching another person drown and did nothing to help. He invites the alleged murderer to his concert and reveals what he knows. And the legend was so well known and so talked about that even Eminem brought it up in one of his songs called Stan. This is a lyric that he had. It said, you know the song by Phil Collins in the air tonight about the guy who could have saved that other guy from drowning, but didn't. Then Phil saw it all. Then at a show he found him. So that's kind of creepy. But I believe that Phil Collins has been denying this rumor. And lastly, we have the song called Brandy, You're a Fine Girl. Brandy was a huge hit 
hit by the band Looking Glass back in 1972. It's about a girl who fell in love with a sea captain who couldn't bring himself to leave his first love. And here's the classic lyrics. It says, Brandy, you're a fine girl. What a good wife you would be. But my life, my lover, my lady is the sea. Now there's an actual legend that this song was based on. Mary Ellis was a woman that lived from 1750 to 1827. And according to the story, Mary fell in love with a sea captain who vowed to come back one day to marry her. She waited in the same spot overlooking the Raritan River for his ship to return, but it never did. And when she died, she requested to be buried in that spot, which now sits smack dab in the middle of a movie theater parking lot. Now, I believe they denied that this song was based on that as well. So we don't really know, but these songs are said to be cursed, which is so creepy. And guys, there are so many other popular songs that you may know that I could talk about. So if you want me to do a part two, give this video a thumbs up and let me know. And once... In an enchanted realm, an oddity stirs, beckoning the curious. Meet Jessaline, once ensnared, now awakened, waiting to be yours.